for tablets no no one is going to ask me punch size no one is going to ask me punch diameter and all so be careful that while studying what are the things where you are investing time don't invest time on things or topics which are not required for gpat so if i say suppose about rheology let's take simple example of rheology as a topic you just need to know for newtonian fluids what is the type of viscometer which is used what is the type of viscometer which is used for newtonian fluids anyone who remembers it oswald viscometer something of that sort on the other hand there are non newtonian fluids there are different viscometers for that you just need to know the name of the viscometer no one is going to ask you to write formula in gpat for oswald viscometer no no one is going to ask you to draw a diagram of oswald viscometer no one is going to ask you to tell the procedure that how is viscosity being measured with the help of oswald no that's where our point comes if someone who is studying rheology say in depth every graph every diagram a cup and cone viscometers bob viscometers is it going to be useful no but probably that student might put almost an hour sorry almost half a day to finish rheology and there will be someone else who will finish rheology maybe within one or two hours maximum within one or two hours because that person would know that okay this is the precise topic which i need to study from rheology as a topic so what i mean to say prior starting is whenever whichever subject you take up and in that subject whichever chapter you take up ensure that you know which part is not necessary jitna ये जरूरी होता है कि कौन सा पार्ट पढ़ना है ये पता होना जितना जरूरी है इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज टू नो विच पार्ट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड सो यू नो देर आर टू साइड ऑफ द कॉइंस वन इज यू नो वॉट इज सपोज टू बी स्टडी यू कीप ऑन बैंगिंग दैट यू स्टडी दैट इन टिप अनदर इज द थिंग्स विच आर नॉट रिक्वायर्ड फॉर जी फैट विच आर नॉट एसेंशियल सो आई डोंट इन्वेस्ट टाइम ऑन दैट सो इफ आई एम स्टडिंग से एनाटॉमी पैथोलॉजी एंड पैथोफिजोलॉजी योर ए पी पी इज सम गोइंग टू आस्क मी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ नोज नो नो इज गोइंग टू आस्क मी दैट So don't invest time on things which are not necessary. That's the major agenda. To start off with today's session on emulsions, just a brief highlight about myself. This is Dharmesh Mehta here, founder of Pharma Elite. I am myself MS in post pharmaceutics from Naipur, Hyderabad. So I'm a pass out of Naipur, Hyderabad. I did my bachelor's from Vivekananda Education Society College of Pharmacy Chamber, and I pursued my master's from. Naipur Hyderabad during which for my project work I was at Sipla Vikroli R&D I've been a part of industry since last two and a half years and I'm parallelly a part of industry as well so when we teach students we not only teach them from entrance point of view we also teach them things which are required parallelly in the industry that's where we help you become different talking about our GPAT Naipur results for 2020 the recent year For GPAT 2020, our best rank by our classroom student was All India Rank 08, Mr. Deepak Chaudhary. So All India Rank 08 was our best GPAT rank for the year 2020. Other than that, when it comes to Naipur 2020, the best rank for Naipur 2020 at Pharma Elite was All India Rank 01. All India Rank 01 in Pharma MBA was the best rank for. Pharma Elite in Naipur 2020. This was for Pharma MBA and for MS, the best rank for Pharma Elite was All India Rank 02. This was in MS category. MS category, the best rank was 02. Pharma MBA category, the best rank was All India Rank 01. Both of general category. Nothing from SC, ST, OBC. Even in SC, even in OBC, we are at rank one. But yes, I am not saying about caste specific ranks. I am saying about Simply your general categories rank. All right, that's about result of Pharma Elite. Let's get to the core topic of our today's session, talking about emulsions. So, with regards to emulsions, what is important, what not? With regards to emulsions, the first and foremost thing is, in case of your emulsions from entrance point of view, no one is going to ask you any question on theories of emulsification. Yes. Theories of emulsification is not required for GPAT, so don't don't think about those lines. Don't invest time in that zone. But then, what is it that is important from emulsions? You should know how are you going to identify emulsions. You should know what are the different surfactants which are a part of your emulsions. Where are they being used? How are they being used? What are the different concentrations in which they are used? 
there is always a fixed question on spans and twins i suppose you all are either of second year third year or final year so spans and twins is something what you all have already studied multiple times the so spans and twins pe ek fixed question raha hai till 2018 there has always been a question on hlb scale your griffin scale if you remember hydrophilic lipophilic balance so this is the background study which you need to know before you get started with any topic once you know clearly that okay from this chapter this topic this particular part is important while studying from g part point of view you will focus accordingly on that particular topic you will invest more time on that particular topic to take it through all right let's get started talking about emulsions basic things about emulsions as we all are aware they basically have two systems one would be your dispersed phase another is your dispersed medium so it is basically a biphasic system can i say that get participated in type in the chat box it's totally fine yes no if you have queries just shoot it up it's totally fine let's keep it interactive don't keep it monotonous just keep it typing in the chat box so that it becomes easy for you as well talking about emulsions basically they are biphasic systems one system would be of your minute globules which would be your dispersed phase so this is the dispersed phase which is being spread across a dispersion medium dispersion medium in the sense your solvent phase in which your emulsion globules are being spread around nextly when you talk about your emulsions emulsions are basically available in two different forms most of the time it is liquid very rare you would also have semi solid emulsions what do you mean by semi solid emulsions have you ever seen semi solid emulsions probably the one who are in final year might have already made a semi solid emulsion creams kya hai creams what we apply these are nothing but your semi solid emulsions only yes they are either oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion or they might be multiple phase emulsion if you are not understanding what i mean to say don't worry i'll come back on to it oil in water emulsion is different type of emulsion water in oil emulsion is a different type of emulsion if those or things are there in these are just different ways in which your emulsions are being classified talking about appearance most of the time your emulsions will be milky white now why does this happen why are emulsions most of the time appear milky white so it is majorly due to the difference in the refractive index it is majorly due to difference in the refractive index that your emulsions are most of the times of milky white appearance at the same time there are two phases in your emulsions which we just talked about one is your dispersed phase your small globules which would be spread around obviously since they are small globules they are dispersed they are not continuous it's the non continuous phase while another is your phase 2 which is the dispersion medium which is nothing but the continuous phase so this continuous phase is nothing but dispersion medium so it would be a medium in which your dispersed phase your globules will be spread around this is nothing but emulsions talking from entrance point of view not important for emulsion but if you talk about suspensions if you go to different dosage forms yes you need to know that what is the size of that particular dosage form when it comes to emulsions emulsions are usually of the size 0.25 to 25 micrometers your emulsions are usually of the size 0.25 to 25 micrometers when it comes to types of emulsions majorly there are two types one is your oil in water emulsion when i say oil in water emulsion what do i mean by it internal phase kya hoga what would be the internal phase can i say oil will be the internal phase oil under it i am saying oil in water so oil is the internal phase water is the external phase i am just putting a design for the water phase so water is the external phase oil is the internal phase when water is the external phase can i say that it is hydrophilic it will get dissolved in water can i say that if it is having water as the aqueous outer phase since water is my exterior phase hai pani bahar ke side hai it can easily dissolve in 
ऑयल इज इन साइड ऑयल अंदर है वॉटर बाहर है ऑयल इज इन साइड वॉटर इज ऑन द एक्सटीरियर साइड तो द वन विच विल कम इन कॉन्टेक्ट विथ योर ओरल कैविटी वेन यू विल टेक इट वाई ओरल रूट इज गोइंग टू बी द हाइड्रोफिलिक लेयर इट्स गोइंग टू बी द वॉटर सो इन ऑल सच केसेस यू कैन यूज इट फॉर इंटरनल पर्पजेस दिस कैन बी गिवन वाई ओरल रूट ऑन द अदर साइड वेन यू हैव वॉटर विच इज डिस्पर्ज इन ऑयल सो से सपोज यू हैव वॉटर ग्लोबल्स विच आर बींग स्प्रेड ओवर ऑयल यू विल हैव वॉटर पार्टिकल्स विच आर बींग स्प्रेड ओवर ऑयल so your water is inside now your oil is outside oil bahar ke taraf hai what would be the difference over here yahan pe kya hoga if oil is the exterior face what do you expect as a part of its solubility and all other parameters right it would be hydrophobic exterior face oil hai so it would be hydrophobic can i say in that case i can prefer making creams as water in oil emulsions can i say i can make creams as water in oil emulsions simple reason being oil exterior phase is i can use it for external applications so yes it would work out over here i hope things are clear till here going further talking about different advantages and disadvantages with regards to your emulsions no one is going to ask you in detail about what are the different advantages in a part of your emulsion just to get an idea and let's just compare it what do you expect as a part of advantages of emulsions entrance mein koi nahi puchega tumko ki bhai iske advantage kya hai ya iske disadvantage kya hai no such easy questions will never be a part of your entrances let how much ever easy be the paper but aise questions to nahi aayenge but just for our understanding and to get an idea what do you expect a usual emulsion to have advantage over your conventional systems how will it be helpful over your conventional systems any idea give it a try it's not that difficult perfect one thing is that it can mask the bitter taste so wherever your drugs have a bitter taste you can probably add a flavor or you can stabilize it using some other parameters and you can mask the bitter taste of your drugs other than masking bitter taste of the drugs what are the other advantages your emulsions can offer you one is masking bitter taste next your different drugs which might be insoluble you can give them via your emulsion route as well so one is taste masking another is increased absorption of your oils so yes you can convert it into emulsion and increase its absorption it can also be used to increase bioavailability how do you increase bioavailability you basically protect it from hydrolysis you ensure that the drug doesn't undergo hydrolysis nor it has a oxidative environment where it will undergo oxidation and yes few of the emulsions are also used in diagnostic and imaging purpose let's not get into what are those cause it's not required it's not but just a parallel example which you can relate it to most of us you might have seen different gels ecg ka bhi kara those who have undergone ecg electrocardiogram gels are being applied gels are being used over there for diagnostic purpose same way i mean to say in case of your emulsions also even they can be used for diagnostic purpose i hope it's clear till here going further if you go to classify emulsions on the basis of particle size i am saying specific with regards to particle size emulsions can be classified on multiple parameters it's not that it's supposed to be classified only on the basis of particle size you can basically classify it on the basis of route of administration as well if i am going to give emulsion via oral route what type of emulsion it will be If I'm going to give emulsion via oral route. What type of emulsion it will be? You know the answer. Oil in water will be water in oil. Hoga. It will obviously be oil in water. Oil would be your internal face. Water would be your external face. Water external face hai. Iske liye wo hydrophilic hai. Wo hydrophilic hai. Isliye main usko oral route se de raho. If I am giving via topical route, what type of emulsion it will be? Say it is a cream. Say it is a gel. 
what type of emulsion it would be if it's a topical application if it's a topical application obviously it will be water in oil water under hoga oil bar ke taraf hoga this oil is bringing to the nature of hydrophobicity so it is more of lipophilic lipophilic material can easily penetrate through your skin so your creams in most of the case will be water in oil emulsions having topical route of administration with regards to particle size your coarse emulsions will basically have large globules your fine emulsions will have particle size which will be less than 5 microns your fine emulsions will have particle size this size would be less than 5 microns and micro emulsions ka particle size would be less than 10 nanometers it will go to that smaller range yes your micro emulsions would have a very small particle size in that case so yes we need to remember this particle size based classification as well it will be required not for all dosage form but yes for few of them so when it comes to entrance what is important from this particular slide i should know about coarse emulsions large globules fine emulsions less than 5 micrometers micro emulsions matlab 10 nanometers se kam i should know that the appearance of emulsions is mostly milky white which is due to difference in its refractive index rest the size is between 0.25 to 25 micrometers if it's a internal application if it's a oral administration as a root in that case i'll require oil in water emulsion main oral cavity se de raha hu to oil in water emulsion hona chahiye agar main usko topical route se de raha hu to it will be water in oil emulsion since it's a external application since it's the external application good to go ahead any questions any queries i hope the speed is fine can we go ahead students yes sir yes sir okay chal let's go so this was just some basics about emulsions how do they act यहाँ पे जो हम लोग ने इमल्शन की बात की इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड वी जस्ट टॉक अबाउट बाई फेज इमल्शन ऑयल इन वाटर और वाटर इन ऑयल हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट अदर टाइप्स ऑफ इमल्शन एज वेल हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट मल्टीपल फेज इमल्शन मल्टीपल फेज इमल्शन विच बेसिकली हैव वाटर इन ऑयल इन वाटर सुना ऐसे इमल्शन हर्ड अबाउट ऑयल इन वाटर इन ऑयल तो ये बेसिकली दे हैव थ्री फेजेस this is just for your information there is no expected question from this part this is just to tell you that these are multiple phase of emulsions so it's not necessary that your emulsions would always be biphasic there are chances where your emulsions will be multiple phase oil in oil or water in oil in water let's go ahead just a brief comparison between emulsions and suspensions that what is it which makes emulsions different from suspensions there are many things which are overlapping with your emulsions and suspensions which we usually tend to take when we are going to deal with suspensions when we will be dealing with different type of your theories like dlvo theory hofmeister series and all those things talking about emulsions and suspensions a brief difference over here with regards to your emulsions what is it which is majorly there emulsions mein kya hota in case of your emulsions emulsions is a biphasic liquid dosage form usme do do phase hote hai same way in your suspensions also there are two phases but the major difference between both of them is in case of emulsions there are two immiscible liquids so there will be two separate layers ek oil ka layer hoga ek water ka layer hoga separated from each other nothing to do with each other on the other side when it comes to your suspensions in case of your suspensions your biphasic liquid dosage form will have some solid particles which is known as your dispersed phase this dispersed phase will be dispersed into a dispersion medium so this is your dispersion medium and this is your dispersed phase oil droplets bolo globules bolo not the case oil droplets will be a part of your emulsions suspensions may your drug is the dispersed phase most of the time and it is dispersed into a dispersion medium 
Now, what is the one of the major difference is the particle size. When it comes to emulsions, they are in the particle size range of 0.25 to 25 micrometers. But in case of your suspensions, the particle size is in the range of 0.5 to 5 microns. Here, the major difference. Rest, it's not that greatly important. In case of emulsions, you will have an emulsifying agent. In case of suspension, you will have a suspending agent. We'll talk about this. These are very important from entrance point of view. It will be in the upcoming slides. What I was talking initially when I started the chapter, I told you about HLB scale. I told you about Griffin scale. So I'll talk about those particular types. With regards to types of emulsions, yes, one is oil in water, another is water in oil. You can also have multiple phase emulsions, what we just discussed in the previous slide. In case of suspension, you have flocculated suspensions and non flocculated suspensions. What is it? How is they different? We'll talk about flocculated and non flocculated suspension in detail when we do suspension chapters. With regards to emulsions, it's easy to identify that whether it is an oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. So there are different tests which help you to identify whether it is oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. In case of suspensions, it is a bit difficult to identify whether it is a flocculated suspension or non-flocculated. Don't worry, it cannot be identified, I won't say, but yes, practically it can be identified. Any idea what is the major difference between your flocculated and non-flocculated suspension? Any idea what is the major difference between your flocculated and non-flocculated suspensions? Flocculated suspension matlab usme flocules bane rahenge. They'll be aggregates. Even if you shake them, it won't get dispersed. Non-flocculated mein utna nahi hota. They get dispersed. You remember there is one statement which says shake well before use. As a part of your directions for using. That shake well before use is used as a statement for your emulsions. As well as it is used as a statement for suspension. Don't forget this. This has been a question one time. Direction such as shake well for shake well before use is for which type of dosage form? Emulsion, suspension, both, none of the above. Emulsion, suspension, both, none of the above. So shake well before use is a direction for both of your dosage forms. Emulsions as well as suspension. Dono ke liye wo instructions aata hai. So don't think that it is only on one part of the picture. No. It is belonging to both of it. We'll discuss about that when we do suspensions. Don't worry. Done with this particular slide. Any questions, any queries till here? Good to go ahead. Yes. Okay, sure. I hope you are done writing this particular slide as well. That was about a brief difference between emulsions and suspensions. Now, what if I want to identify the type of emulsion? We just talked that there are different type of emulsions, right? We said that in case of your identification type of emulsion, you have miscibility test. Suna rega, miscibility test, conductivity test, filter paper test. That's how we are going to identify whether it is an oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. So when it comes to miscibility test, ek -ek karke se sare test samajna. don't hurry up onto it. They are conceptual. There is no need of rectifying things. Okay. First, is se start karte. electrical conductivity test. Sab se easy. In case of electrical conductivity test, electricity conduct kon karta hai? Water karta hai ki oil karta hai? Don't go with the table. There can be some mistake in the table. Huh? Don't go with the table. There can be some error in the table. So don't read it and don't answer according to table. Okay. Oil and water phase may be all are aware. It is the water. Jo electricity conduct karta hai. Agar main ek emulsion ko electric current pass kar rahu, And if I want to see whether it is conducting electricity or not. अगर वो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कंडक्ट करता है तो उसका एक्सटर्नल फेस क्या होगा फॉर अ इमल्शन व्हेन आई एम सप्लाइंग इट विद इलेक्ट्रिसिटी 
and if it conducts electricity in that particular case whether its external phase will be water or it would be oil ek emulsion hai jiska internal phase oil hai uska external phase water hai water ko maine shade kiya एक दूसरा इमल्शन है जिसका इंटरनल फेस वाटर है अंदर पानी है और बाहर ऑयल है तो दिस इज ऑयल इंटरनल फेज इज वाटर सो वाटर आई है सिंस वी ऑल आर अवेयर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कंडक्ट हमेशा पानी ही करने वाला है सो इफ वाटर इज द एक्सटीरियर फेज इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस इट इज गोइंग टू कंडक्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वॉट आई सेड if water is the exterior phase it is going to conduct electricity so can i say your oil in water emulsion jab oil andar hoga aur pani bahar hoga can i say your oil in water emulsion will conduct electricity your oil in water emulsion will conduct electricity simple being water is the external phase so water is going to sub conduct the electricity so your oil in water emulsion as a whole will always conduct electricity so it's going to be a conductor of electricity if i talk about water in oil emulsion jisme water internal phase hai ye wala pani andar hai oil bahar hai will it conduct electricity oil is the external phase will it conduct electricity no oil is not a good conductor of electricity सो अगर मैं कोई इमल्शन को इलेक्ट्रिक करंट पास कर रहा हूँ एंड इफ इट्स नॉट कंडक्टिंग इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इट सिंपली मीन्स दैट उसका एक्सटर्नल फेस ऑयल है अगर उसका एक्सटर्नल फेस ऑयल है मतलब उसका इंटरनल फेस वुड बी वाटर इन दैट केस इट्स अ वाटर इन ऑयल इमल्शन इज दिस थिंग क्लियर इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी टेस्ट आर वी क्लियर विथ इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी टेस्ट एनी वन एज एनी डाउट एनी क्वेरीज I hope the speed is comfortable, right? We are not going fast. Okay. That was about electrical conductivity test. यहाँ पे जो statements लिखे हैं, they are exactly opposite. This statement should come on right, and this statement should come on left. That's why I told you don't focus on the table. Let's go to the next test. Miscibility test. Simple चीज. अंदर oil है, बाहर water है. Inside there is oil. On the exterior side there is water. So now you have oil in water emulsion. Now what you have is basically a oil in water emulsion. Water बाहर के तरफ है, ठीक है? अब मैं इस emulsion को अगर water add करता हूँ, if I'm adding water to this particular emulsion, can I say that I'll get a homogeneous phase? can i say that i'll get a homogeneous phase water is the external phase i'm adding water to it so obviously i'll get a homogeneous phase if water is added to a oil in water emulsion oil andar hai water bahar hai agar main isko water add karunga to i'll get a homogeneous phase on the other hand if to the same oil in water emulsion If I am adding oil, वो oil in water emulsion है अंदर oil है बाहर water है अब अगर मैं इसको oil add कर रहा हूँ I'll get a heterogeneous phase. Am I correct? Exterior side पे water है water is not going to be miscible with it. So they won't form a homogeneous phase. Rather I'll get a heterogeneous phase if oil is being added. They'll separate into two different layers. Now the same logic applies to your water in oil emulsion. Water under है. Shading it again. So this is your water. Your oil is the exterior phase. बाहर oil है, अंदर water है. अगर आप इसको oil add करोगे, you are adding oil. Exterior phase is also oil. So in that particular case where at both the ends there is oil only. obviously it will be a homogeneous phase if oil is added it will be a homogeneous phase if oil is added on the other hand if water is added it will be a heterogeneous phase 
on the other hand if water is added it will be a heterogeneous phase easy enough good to go ahead basic test hai. keep eye on all of them talking about staining test <coughs> in case of staining test the stain is always picked up by your oil phase stain is always picked up by your oil phase in case of your oil in water emulsion your oil is the dispersed phase so your dispersed phase will get stained on the other side for a water in oil emulsion oil continuous phase so your continuous phase will be stained going to the last two in case of your fluorescence test again it's your oil phase which will show fluorescence so here also your dispersed phase will be showing fluorescence while here your continuous medium which is the oil phase will be showing fluorescence lastly talking about cobalt chloride filter paper test your cobalt chloride filter paper test shows color change from blue to pink only for a oil in water emulsion it doesn't show a color change for water in oil emulsion no need to get into how why what no one is going to ask us padne ke time precise raho what is required for entrance don't divert yourself don't invest time on things which are not required clear till here i hope you are done with copying this table as well can we move to the next part of it i hope the speed is comfortable and we can go ahead all right and don't worry when i am switching languages i am saying the same thing so if i am saying something in hindi it's the same thing what i already spoke in english or other ways around so don't worry you are not missing on to anything talking about classification of emulsions based on the different surfactants and based on mode of administration now when it comes to based on type of emulsifying agent there are a lot of emulsions which will have different emulsifying agent so if that emulsion is containing natural gum like acacia tragacanth you consider it as a different type of emulsion if you are using gum substitutes like your cellulose it's a different category soaps would be different saponins and starch would be different do we need to buy at all of this no no there is no need of buying all of them so with regards to your types of emulsions when it comes to emulsions containing natural gum and gum substitute be specific with regards to the examples what you are supposed to buy at buy at example of emulsions containing natural waxes natural waxes like your wolf fat and your beeswax buy at emulsions containing synthetic waxes which is like your cito macrogol no need of getting into other emulsions buy at the specific ones only there is no need of getting into the in detailed ones i hope it's clear to you that was about your emulsions which is having on the basis of your different criteria based on different emulsifying agents which are being used on the other hand when we talk about your emulsions which are on the basis of mode of administration i told you initially about mode of administration which for oral administration you can have your different oils which would be the internal phase so it will be a oil in water emulsion where your oils would be occupying a internal phase and your waters would be having a external phase that's how they will be different your oils will be a internal phase your water would be a external phase on the other hand when it comes to your emulsions for external use it can be your creams paste and gels in case of emulsions for parenteral use it can be your fat soluble vitamins even your oil soluble sex hormones are being given via emulsion route medroxy progesterone acetate is the example of your steroid which is given via this route it's a suspension which can be made as an emulsion as well emulsions for rectal applications can be with starch and mucilage now when it comes to entrance this is what i want to tell be specific only natural gum acacia tragacanth is important why that also that will see in the next slide
there is that specific ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 1 fixed oils volatile oils and all that's why you need to know this emulsions containing gum substitute yes with regards to your cellulosics and emulsions with regards to your natural vaccines and synthetic waxes there is no need of going into detail with other parts so just go tick here just be specific to that no need to go in detail with all of them clear enough सब कुछ लिखने में भी टाइम वेस्ट मत करना सब कुछ पढ़ने में भी टाइम वेस्ट मत करना कैन आई गो एड नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू फिक्स क्वेश्चन विच वुड बी फ्रॉम दिस पार्ट येस देर विल बी अ फिक्स क्वेश्चन विच विल बी फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिक्युलर पार्ट what it will be how it will be how it has been asked in the past we'll talk about all of those cases you remember in the initial phase i told you about hlb scale your griffin scale which is nothing but your hydrophilic lipophilic balance how does that hlb scale play a role how are the questions being asked from your hlbs we'll talk about all of them right now basically karta hai kya emulsifying agent what does it do how does it act what is its mechanism of action wherein it stabilizes the emulsion you might have heard your emulsions are thermodynamically unstable yaad hai heard about this term they are thermodynamically unstable why are they being said thermodynamically unstable just the concept part of it koi puchega nahi why are your emulsions being said thermodynamically unstable any reason yeah they are biphasic systems yes your emulsifying agent basically reduce surface tension that's the major way about how your emulsions act that's one part of the picture so remember let it be your suspending agent or let it be your emulsifying agent both of them are going to reduce the surface tension only they'll basically reduce the surface tension whereby they'll ensure that there is enough miscibility and the stress conditions are being removed when you go to nano emulsions wherein you go to smeds self micro emulsifying drug delivery systems even there it would play the same role only difference is that when it comes to your smeds which is self micro emulsifying drug delivery systems they are not emulsions right from start it's the in situ formation what occurs it's a totally different part no need for us to get into detail as of now for that let's focus over here that what would be the probable question and how do we go about it so when we talk about our emulsifying agents basically they'll reduce the interfacial tension they are known by they are also known as emulsions or emulsifiers a stable emulsion would basically have combination of two or more emulsifying agent it won't be specific only to one emulsifying agent it might consist of one or two emulsifying agents this is what i was talking about which has been a question in the past griffin's hlb scale hydrophilic lipophilic balance scale there has always been a question on hydrophilic lipophilic balance how does it work what it is let's see so when it comes to selection for your emulsions what is the emulsifying agent which you are going to use if you want to shortlist that you need to calculate hlbs of them without calculating hydrophilic lipophilic balance you cannot decide which emulsifying agent is supposed to be used so your hlb method or your griffin's hydrophile lipophile balance is used for calculating balance mixture of your emulsifying agents ek scale tha something like this i hope you remember this scale right ye scale as it is we need to know it but <coughs> what is it specific which we need to remember that i let you know now itself how are the questions being asked how are they supposed to be answered as well let's get going so when it comes to your hlb scale basically it is divided into two main parts one is your oil in water emulsion part another is your water in oil emulsion part to do alag emulsion se hai to wo dono ke liye kya levels rahenge only that part of it is something which we need to know so if i talk about a water in oil emulsion 
अगर मेरे को वाटर इन ऑयल इमल्शन बनाना है देन इट हैज टू बी समवेयर इन द एच एल बी रेंज ऑफ थ्री टू एट वाटर इन ऑयल इमल्शन इट विल बी समवेयर इन द रेंज ऑफ थ्री टू एट एंटी फोमिंग एजेंट्स आर राइट एट द बॉटम फ्रॉम जीरो टू थ्री यू कैन कंसिडर ऑन द अदर हैंड योर ऑयल इन वॉटर ऑयल अंदर पानी बाहर विच इज द हाइड्रोफिलिक पार्ट ऑफ इट सिंस वॉटर इज आउटसाइड ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी वॉटर सोल्यूबल आई रिपीट सिंस वॉटर इज आउटसाइड ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी वॉटर सोल्यूबल इन दैट केस योर ऑयल इन वॉटर इमल्सिफायर्स विच आर फॉर hydrophilic systems which are water soluble are in the range of 8 to 16 they are in the range of 8 to 16 then you have your detergents which would be somewhere in the range of 13 to 16 or 12 to 15 your solubilizing agents which are in the range of 16 to 18 where is your wetting agents any idea about wetting agents where are your wetting agents 7 to 9 perfect so yes we need to buy out about all this agents being used at what scale so your wetting agents are supposed to be used in the scale of 7 to 9 your wetting agents are supposed to be used in the hlb range of 7 to 9 so you need to have HLB of seven to nine. If you want to improve the solubility of a drug using a wetting agent, if you want to make a water in oil emulsifier, select a emulsifying agent which will have its HLB in the range of three to eight. I am repeating. Just listen to my statement again, because here is the place where your question will get twisted with examples coming in. If you don't get this, <coughs> application will become difficult. So be clearer. be clear on this part right from now agar mujhe water in oil emulsion banana hai hlb kya hona chahiye what should be the hlb for a water in oil emulsion give it a try even if we go wrong it's totally fine what is the hlb for a water in oil emulsion perfect it has to be between 3 to 8 what is the hlb for a oil in water emulsion अगर मुझे ऑयल इन वाटर इमल्शन बनाना है देन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस व्हाट विल बी द एच एल बी एट टू सिक्सटीन कीप पुटिंग इट इन द चैट बॉक्स डोंट वरी आई एल कीप नोटिंग इट द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कशन इज गोइंग टू बी दिस टॉक अबाउट डिफरेंट इमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट्स आई वोट टेल यू द नेम ऑफ दैट इमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट or the other way around i'll tell you the hlb value and you are supposed to predict that what type of emulsion can be made out of this so say suppose i am telling you acacia acacia can be used to make a emulsion which will be water in oil or oil in water both none of the above acacia can be used for what type of emulsions acacia can be used for what type of emulsions so acacia basically can be used for both the type of emulsion it's not specific to only one it can be used for both the type of emulsions simple reason being its hlb value is 8 that is point number 1 since its hlb value is 8 it can easily go for your water in oil emulsifiers at the same time whenever you are using acacia or most of the cases all your emulsifying agents they are used in combination it won't be a single emulsifying agent most of the times it will be two or more emulsifying agents so you combine it with another emulsifying agent which is on the higher side of your griffin scale and that's how you can also make a oil in water emulsifier out of it okay this was easy this was easy to understand this was easy to predict what if i tell you that i am going to use sodium lauryl sulfate sls एस एल एस यूज करना और मैं अकेला एस एल एस ही यूज करूंगा मैं कोई कॉम्बिनेशन वाला यूज नहीं करने वाला हूँ आई एम जस्ट फ्रेमिंग अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इफ आई एम यूजिंग एस एल एस एज अमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट वॉट टाइप ऑफ इमल्शन डू आई एक्सपेक्ट आंसर तुम्हारे सामने ही है टेबल्स को बराबर से देखो यू विल गेट द आंसर इफ आई एम यूजिंग एस एल एस एज अमल्सिफायर वॉट टाइप ऑफ इमल्शन आई एम मेकिंग लेट्स ऑब्जर्व किधर है एस एल एस सोडियम लॉरल सल्फेट ओके सोडियम लॉरल सल्फेट का एच क्या है 
एच एल बी ऑफ सोडियम लॉरल सल्फेट इज फोर्टी फोर्टी इज ऑन द हायर साइड सो येस आई विल बी मेकिंग पॉसिबली ओनली ऑयल इन वॉटर एमल आई वोट बी एबल टू मेक वॉटर इन ऑयल एमलशन वॉट आई विल बी एबल टू मेक विल बी ऑयल इन वॉटर एमलशन घर पे शैम्पू का बॉटल रहेगा ना शैम्पू के बॉटल पे देखो एस एल एस होता है शैम्पू कंटेन सोडियम लॉरल सल्फेट और राइट अभी इसमें तो दस इमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट है मैं हर एक इमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट का तो एच एल बी वैल्यू बाय नहीं करूंगा I need to know something precise. I need to know something logical, which can help me to remember different emulsifying agents in an easy manner. How do I do this? So till date, whatever questions has come straight forward that HLB value of acacia is, HLB value of tragacanth is, HLB value of sodium lauryl sulfate is. ये तीन चीजों का हमको value बाहर करना पड़ेगा. HLB value of acacia is eight. HLB value of tragacanth is thirteen. And HLB value of sodium lauryl sulfate is 40. ठीक है यहाँ तक easy. Remember acacia, remember tragacanth, remember sodium lauryl sulfate. HLB value of triethanol amine oleate is also on the higher side, which is at 12. Tragacanth के नीचे ये three for three for triethanol amine. They both are around 12, 13. ठीक है यहाँ तक easy है. Now just observe what I am saying, because immediately next I will be having a question for you. All right, let's go later on to this first. Uh, okay, let's pick it up. When it comes to polysorbate twenty, polysorbate twenty ka HLB value is around sixteen point seven. Polysorbate sixty ka HLB value is around fourteen. Polysorbate eighty ka HLB value is around fifteen. If someone is asking you. What is the value of polysorbate forty? What is the value of polysorbate forty? How do you do it? Someone says it's between fourteen to sixteen. Someone says it's between fourteen to sixteen. How do you do that? How did you do it? What about twins? Can I say twins and polysorbates are one and the same? Can I say twins and polysorbates are one and the same? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Polysorbates. Yes, sir. So when, yes, it comes, sir. when it comes to your spans twins, your twins and polysorbates are synonyms. Polysorbate is just another word for your twins. They are one and the same. We'll later on go into their chemistry. We'll later on go into what it is, how it is, and all. As of now, I just want you to remember one thing: that polysorbate and twins are actually one and the same thing. With regards to different types of polysorbates, like when I say twin twenty, when I say twin forty, when I say twin sixty, when I say twin eighty, what is the difference? What is it that keeps changing? If you remember, they all are fatty acids esters, right? Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. When it comes to polysorbate twenty or twin twenty, it is basically composed of lauric acid. It is having lauric acid as the fatty acid which is involved. In case of your forty, twin forty is your palmitic acid. Twin forty is your palmitic acid. Twin sixty is your stearic acid. Twin sixty. Is your stearic acid and twin eighty is basically your folic acid. Rest entire things in their nomenclature stays as it is. This is important from entrance point of view. Pick up any paper from G Pat twenty thirteen two zero one three to two zero one eight. Let it be any G Pat paper. Let it be any Niper paper. There has always been a question from this. Twin forty means which fatty acid? The rest entire thing in all the four options is same. You will get difference of lauric, palmitic, stearic, and oleic only. It's you who need to remember the trick. L P S O. What does it stand for? L is lauric. P is palmitic. S is stearic. O is oleic. L P S O. Twin twenty may twin twenty will stand for lauric. 
Win 40 will stand for palmitic. Win 60 will stand for steric. And Win 80 will stand for olic. It was not a part of 2019 as well. It was not a part of 2020 as well. NTA has come in, so few questions would shuffle around. It won't be the case that it will always be a part of it. You can expect that variations any day. Is it clear till here? This is spans here, we say twins here. Spans is also another part. So we'll do that as well. As of now, I just wanted to ask you about polysorbate 40. So if you know that polysorbate 20 is at 16, polysorbate 80 is at 15, and polysorbate 60 is around 14. So can I say polysorbate 40 will be somewhere between 14 to 16? Why bola? Because when I polysorbate 20 to 60 ka range, dekhta ho, rather 20 to 80, polysorbate 20 to 80 is between 16.7 to 15. And if I take polysorbate 16 to account, 14.9. So polysorbate 40 will also have a HLB which will be between 14 to 16. So this is the way you don't know the precise value, but the range can help you to answer the question. Chara option may eki option oga jo higher side pe hoga, baki sare options lower side pe hoga. Remember, GPAT is the easiest exam to solve if you know elimination method. One such is answer new sakta. If you can go on eliminating that, you can probably solve a lot of questions where you might feel that okay, this is not my cup of tea, ya to mujhe iska background nahi pata hai. If you apply elimination method, probably you can solve a lot of questions. In. Polysorbate 20 diya tha, 20 ka HLB 16 hai, 60 ka HLB 14.9 hai, 80 ka HLB 15 hai, 1, 5. Ab un log ne iske beech ki value puchhi hai, unho ne puchha ki HLB of polysorbate 40 is. So agar polysorbate 40 ka value puchha hai, to polysorbate 40 ka HLB will be between polysorbate 20 and 60 only na. It won't vary. Polysorbate 20 ka value was 16, polysorbate 60 ka value was 14. So polysorbate 40 will be between 14 to 16. That's why the answer is between 14 to 16. Simple. I hope this helps. Is the doubt answered? All right. Good to go ahead. Yes, yes. Okay, let's move. All right. We first saw classification of emulsions, emulsifying agents on the basis of different gums, acacia based on route of administration. When you define it by source, here also don't invest your time trying to buy at each and every synthetic source. There is no need of biating every cationic, non-ionic source. Be specific with regards to what is required. Buy at only the natural and semi-synthetic ones. Once you do this too, whatever is pending is going to be a part of synthetic only. Semi-synthetic has only two. One is your methyl cellulose. Another is your sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. So these are the only two major semi-synthetic emulsifying agents. Methyl cellulose and sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. Sodium carboxymethyl cellulose is used to a very great extent as an emulsifying agent. It is used not only in your pharmaceutical industry, along with pharmaceutical industry, it is used in different confectionery as well. Ice creams may be used, it has got multiple applications. When you talk about natural polysaccharides, which are being used as your emulsifying agents, Acacia and tragacanth is probably we all used in our college practicals. Those who could get these practicals during your dispensing pharmacy. Rest all are rarely being used. Especially in pharma, you prefer sodium carboxymethyl cellulose only most of the times. Also, your sterol containing substances are being utilized. With regards to that, you need to know beeswax, wool fat, and wool alcohol. So from entrance point of view, just buy out this two this three along with your semi-synthetic sources in case of your synthetic sources for emulsifying agents you have your alkali metals 
different salts, different phosphate salts, different cationic surfactants, different non-ionic surfactants. It is basically entire classification of your surfactants only. Anionic, cationic, non-ionic. There is no need of biating that. It na agar ko synthetic hai, to sirf surfactants. Done writing this slide. Good to go ahead. Okay. Let's move. This is based on use. No need of getting into this. All right. Now we are coming to the most important question, which has been a part of your GPAD question multiple times. So talking about different gums, which are being used as emulsifying agents. So as we discussed initially, it's most of the time a combination of your gums. It's not a single emulsifying agent, which is being used to prepare an emulsion. So when it comes to gum acacia, it is being used to a great extent. It is the best primary emulsifying agent when it comes to internal applications. So can I say if I'm saying it's for internal use, it is a oil in water emulsion. Can I say this? Can I say it's an oil in water emulsion? Gum acacia ka HLBB 8 tha. Although it can be used for both oil in water as well as water in oil emulsion. But can I say it's a best primary emulsifying agent for internal use? It means that it's for oil in water emulsion. At the same time, it is stable over the pH range of 2 to 10. At the same time, it is stable over pH range of 2 to 10. Also, when you want a more stable emulsion, as we discussed in the previous slide, it's always combination of two emulsifying agents. It's not just one emulsifying agent. It is rather combination of two different emulsifying agents. So you can use your acacia and ragagan together, which would help you to impart viscosity. It will increase the viscosity of your emulsions. So a question which is being asked multiple times and has a chance of coming in again is this. If the type of oil which is used in the the fixed oil, then what will be the ratio of oil to water to gum? What will be the ratio of oil to water to gum? So in this case, water and gum are always in the ratio of 2 is to 1. Irrespective of whether it is a fixed oil or it's a volatile oil, in all the cases, your oil to water to gum, your water and gum will always be in 2 is to 1 ratio. On the other hand, when it comes to your oil, if it changes from fixed oil to volatile oil, the ratio of oil would drop down from 4 to 2. If it's a mineral oil, it will be 3 parts. So yes, this would vary based on oil. Now, how are they going to ask us question? Are they going to tell you straight away what is the ratio of volatile oil to water is to gum? Very rare. They won't keep it this easy. What they'll ask you is, what is the ratio of peppermint oil to water is to gum to prepare an emulsion. I repeat my question. What is the ratio of peppermint oil to water to gum to prepare an emulsion? So, first of all, I want to know that peppermint oil is a part of what? So, if I observe peppermint oil is a part of my volatile oils. What was the ratio of volatile oils? Ratio of volatile oils was 2 is to 2 is to 1. So, that's the answer. This is how we are supposed to solve it. If you have examples, then the question will solve it. Otherwise, most of the times, what mistakes we make, we do the first column and we do the third column. We don't know that what are the examples and question is application based. Data. So yes, we need to remember that castor oil, almond oil, RHS oil and your cord level oil are a part of your fixed oils. So you have the short form in that case, CAP, A, C, C, D, CAP, of a day. Forget E out of it. The C stands for castor oil and cod liver oil. A square stands for almond oil and RHS oil. While your F is standing for fixed. 
cafe on the other hand when it comes to your volatile oil in case of your volatile oil pc pay tv these days we don't see tv right if i want to see match i'll open hotstar on my laptop i won't go to tv to see star sports so pc pay tv p stands for peppermint oil c stands for cinnamon oil t stands for turpentine oil and v stands for volatile oil so peppermint cinnamon and turpentine oil are a part of my volatile oils peppermint cinnamon turpentine are a part of my volatile oils same way in case of mineral oils it's a liquid paraffin which is in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 ये टेबल बाहर कर लो इसको स्टार लगा लो यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस डन गुड टू गो एड एनी वन एंड वॉन्ट्स मी टू वेट बैक All right, let's go. These are some different emulsifying agents. Yeah, it would be the same. These are some different emulsifying agents along with the concentrations in which they are to be used. Now, are we supposed to buy at concentrations of all of them? Is there a need to buy at concentration of each and every emulsifying agent? The answer is no. But then there are some specific emulsifying agents for which you need to remember the concentration, which are a probable question. Now there is a trick in this as well. It's easy. It's not that difficult. If you see sodium carboxy methyl cellulose, the word methyl is missing. Sodium carboxy methyl cellulose. It is used in the concentration of 0.5 to 1 percent. Sodium carboxy methyl cellulose. is used in the concentration of 0.5 to 1 percent least sabse kam concentration mein sodium carboxy methyl cellulose use hota hai sabse highest concentration mein milk of magnesia use hota hai as i must it needs to be used at 10 to 20 percent on the other hand if it is pectin gelatin or magnesium aluminium silicate if it is pectin gelatin or magnesium aluminium silicate they all are being used at 1% only pectin gelatin and magnesium silicate they are always being used at 1% only when it comes to agar and methyl cellulose mat in case of mat m stands for methyl cellulose a stands for agar t stands for 2 They both are used at two percent only. Let it be methyl cellulose or let it be agar. They both are used at two percent only. The next comes is your bentonite, which is used at five percent. Agar sare examples baat nahi kar sakte ho. At least remember this much. I have hardly eliminated three. Egg yolk nahi chahiye, magnesium oxide nahi chahiye, Irish moss nahi chahiye. Sodium carboxy methyl cellulose sabse kam concentration mein use hota hai, which is point five to one percent. मिल्क ऑफ मैग्नेशिया सबसे हायर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन पे यूज होता है विच इज टेन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट पेक्टिन जेलेटिन मैग्नेशियम एल्यूमिनियम सिलिकेट इज एट वन परसेंट इट सेल अगार एंड मथेल सेलोज आर एट टू परसेंट बेंटोनाइट इज एट फाइव परसेंट दैट्स इट देन कॉपिन दिस जो स्टार मार्क किया है फोकस ओनली ऑन दैट इफ पॉसिबल तीन ही बच रहा है वो तीन भी बाहर कर लेना बट ऐसा ना हो सब पढ़ने के पीछे आप कंफ्यूज कर दो सो बी केयरफुल विथ वॉट यू आर सिलेक्टिंग इन लेट्स मूव टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रिपेरेशन ऑफ इमल्शन सो अभी हम लोग ने इमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट्स देख लिया इमल्सिफाइंग एजेंट्स वोलाटाइल ऑयल और वॉटर के साथ यूज कर रहे तो क्या रेशियो होगा हमने वो चेक कर लिया वी सो दैट what it is going to consist of so it will have a oil phase it will have a water phase it will have a emulsifying agent which is going to reduce surface tension to stabilize it it may have a preservative it may have a antioxidant at the same time it may also have a flavoring agent 
So there are different ways when you make emulsions at lab scale and large scale. Lab scale is something which we do in our college. College may dry gum method, wet gum method, and bottle method. Probably we try these two methods in. Now, question number one is anyone asking me to write a short note on dry gum method? No. Wet gum method? No. I just need to know the name. That dry gum method, wet gum method are used at lab scale for method of preparation of emulsions. Bottle method is a method used at lab scale for preparation of emulsion. No need to go into its principle. No need to go into its equipment. No need to go in the order of addition. Pehle kya add karna hai, baad mein kya add karna hai, not required. Other equipments which are used at your lab scale for preparing emulsions include your hand homogenizer. It also includes your silver sun mixture homogenizer, Kenwood mixer and QP emulsifiers. Now these are just name of different mixtures and emulsifiers. On the other side, when it comes to industrial scale, in industry, you use equipments like ultrasonifiers and your colloidal mills. In industry, you use instruments like ultrasonifiers and colloidal mills at a large scale for preparation of your emulsions. Safe equipments ke naam yaad rakhna hai. Working and all mein humko nahi jana hai. Meko short note nahi likhna hai. I'm studying it for GFAT. Talking about preservatives, yes, we need to buy the concentration at which different preservatives are being used. Aage ja ke antioxidants aega. Antioxidant kya concentration mein use karte hai? Wo bhi buy karna padega. We have got no options. It can be a straightforward question. Preservative like tetramide is used at what concentration in emulsion? So when it comes to different preservatives which are used in emulsions, your Chloroform is the one which is used in the highest concentration. It can go up to 0.25%. On the other side, the lowest concentration when it comes to your preservatives, your cetrimide is used from 0.002 to 0.01%. Your phenyl mercuric nitrate is used from 0.004 to 0.01%. When it comes to chloroclazole, your chloroclazole is used up to 0.1%. And your benzoic acids and your parabens, methyl paraben, they are used from 0.1 to 0.2 percent. Hardly pass it. If you find this difficult to remember, at least remember phenyl mercuric nitrate. At least remember chlorocrazole. Ye do to bhul na mat. Benzoic acid and your parabens are easy. It's just 0.1 to 0.2 percent. If possible, remember other as well. These are just simple different instruments. This is your hand homogenizer. This is your silver sun mixture homogenizer. This is Kenwood mixture. This is all what we just discussed over here. Different instruments which are used in emulsion manufacturing. And with this slide, run copying things. Anyone who is still writing? Let's go. Evaluation, I won't be willing to go in detail now. I would directly like you to moving for how do we take question answers in. So just read through everything once before I take you to Q&A. You can take three minutes and then I take you to Q&A. 7.42 now, I wait till 7.45. Just read through whatever you have done till now. I'll only put up two questions to give you a kind of way how we take it up. And then I'll just show you how we take up different subjects at Family. Just finish reading everything, whatever you have written till now. HLBK numerical There are HLB numericals which has five formulas. A bad day, you can expect a question from that as well. So we have to do that as well when it comes to your emulsions and suspensions.
last two minutes in. If you are done reading, just let me know. Miscibility test may, if on addition of water, it is becoming homogeneous, what type of emulsion it will be? Miscibility test may, if I am adding water and if it is becoming homogeneous, what type of emulsion it will be? Homogeneous ho hai, main pani add kar rao tabhi, matlab water external phase hai. So it is oil in water emulsion. Great. What if it is not conducting electricity when I am passing electric current to a emulsion? If it is not conducting electricity, what type of emulsion it is? Agar wo electricity conduct nahi kar raha hai, matlab uska external phase water hai. Uska nahi. Agar wo electricity conduct nahi kar raha hai, matlab uska external phase oil hai. Oil external phase is water internal phase. Hai. Water internal phase is a water in oil emulsion. Great. When it comes to a emulsifying agent like acacia, acacia ka HLB kya hai? 8. And when it comes to sodium laurel sulfate, uska HLB kya hai? Okay, it's 40. Sodium laurel sulfate is 40. 13 is Kant. 1 3 is Tragakan. अगर मैं पॉलीसॉर्बेट 40 की बात करूं पॉलीसॉर्बेट 40 क्या रेंज में एचएल भी होगा पॉलीसॉर्बेट 40 परफेक्ट इट विल बी बिटवीन 14 टू 16 एंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट वेटिंग एजेंट्स वेटिंग एजेंट्स का एचएल भी क्या रेंज में होना चाहिए 7 टू 9 अगर सोल्युबलाइज आ 14 टू 16 इज डिफरेंट वेटिंग एजेंट्स वाज 7 टू 9 क्या हो गया वेयर डिड वी गो रॉन्ग all right, anti foaming agent रहेंगे तो क्या HL भी होना चाहिए? Anti foaming. Take this. Anti foaming is zero to three. Wetting agent was seven to nine. Detergents was fourteen to sixteen. Solubilizing agents रहेगा तो क्या होगा? Solubilizing agents होंगे तो HL भी क्या होगा? Sixteen to eighteen. Perfect. I guess the screen sharing is stopped. Just a second. Are you able to see anything on screen? Just wait back. The screen sharing is stopped. Just a second, it will be there in front. If it's a turpentile oil, turpentile oil ke liye, what is the ratio of oil water to gum? For turpentine oil, what is the ratio of oil to water to gum? Okay, it's 2 is to 2 is to 1. And if it is a volatile oil, then what is the ratio? A volatile oil, what is the ratio? Again, it's 2 is to 2 is to 1. Okay, so turpentile oil is an example of volatile oil only. That's what I recollect, right? All right, here are your two questions. I suppose you will be able to answer one. You might just not be able to answer the other one. Probably you can answer both. Yes, you can answer both. Here we go. Perfect. One is eight. Pan 40 will have your fatty acid, palmitic acid. So let it be span or let it be tween. Agar mein span 20 bolta hu, to bhi hamesha uske andar lauric acid hoga. Agar mein tween 20 bolta hu, to bhi usme hamesha lauric acid hi hoga. Let it be span or tween. 20 would always mean that it's a lauric acid. If I am say 40, 
40 would always mean that it is palmitic acid. Let it be twin or let it be span. It would always be palmitic acid only. If I say span 60, to kya hoga ho? LPSO short form banaya tha na boss. Right? S would always mean that it is stearic acid at 60. And if I say span 80, it would always mean that it is olic acid. Clear enough? All right, this is just a glimpse of how we take up questions. There would be multiple questions at the end of each chapter. One by one, I'll just take you to how we take up different subjects. I have just stopped screen sharing again. If you have any doubts or if you want to ask anything, any questions, feel free to reach out to the number from wherein you got the joining link. It may be group or at the same time, I'll just uh, share another contact number with you. You can reach out to us on that number as well. I'm audible, right? Am I audible? Okay. I suppose you are able to see miscellaneous important topics on screen. Miscellaneous important topics. Eh? So here's the contact number 84338-30815. You can reach out to him for all your queries. Admission procedures. When will be the lectures? Lectures would be on Sundays from 10 to 1 in the morning and Sunday evenings from 4.30 to 5.30. At the same time, weekdays lectures are on Saturdays, 2nd, 3rd and 4th Saturday. It would be 7 to 8.30 in the evening on Saturdays. And for GPAT 2021 students, lectures will be in weekdays as well. They will be provided with concise notes for different subjects on your Google Classroom. Test series would be totally online. You can attempt the same paper multiple times. It's available in the domain. You can write paper at any time. The moment you click on submit, you can immediately get the result for the question paper as well. You can see what amount of time or seconds you are spending on any topic while answering it. Now, this miscellaneous important topics basically mean that there are a lot of topics which are from different chapters where the entire chapter is not important, but some part of that chapter is important. Like you are doing emulsions now. In case of emulsions, we saw the same Griffith scale. What is the HLB range it is applicable in? You have your different viscosity of Newton and liquids at 20 degrees. So they straight away have question on viscosity of Newton and liquids at 20 degrees. Question can also be on dielectric constant of solvents at 20 degrees. So just the absolute viscosity ka table hai, same way we need to have a table for dielectric constant. So there are such multiple parameters which are straight away being asked in entrance, which we need to buy at as a value. We need to know a list of antioxidants. We need to know ADRs. Abhi tak kolozi mein jab ADR pad rahe the, ab drug specific ADR pad rahe the. Ab kya pad rahe the? Minocycline se vestibular toxicity hota hai. Ab kya pad rahe the? Heparin se osteoporosis hota hai. From thyroxine, ADR is osteoporosis. For glucocorticoids, your ADR is osteoporosis. Now what we have done is we have compiled drugs which have the same ADR. Hepatotoxicity bola. So hepatotoxicity is being caused by which all drugs? It can be your drug like halothin. It can be your antibiotics like streptomycin. It can be your anti-thyroid drug like propyl thiouracin. It can be your anti-epileptic drugs like valproic acid. Ye sari drugs alag alag chapter ke hai. But yes, all drug may ADR same. Hai. They all are causing hepatotoxicity. So all such drugs which have the same ADR, we have grouped them together. So while studying, you will be specific that what is required on an important note and how can we make it easy for ourselves while studying. Here I just mentioned about viscosities of different liquids at different temperatures. Same way you have a, a different list for different dielectric constant of liquids same way you have for solubility in different solvents it's a different table altogether to make things easy so drugs which have same adr of gynecomastia drugs which have the same adr of gingival hyperplasia penitoin pe question teen char bar aaya penitoin ke do adr hai major ek gingival hyperplasia hai 
gingiver hyperplasia other than phenytoin you have lamotrigine cyclosporin sirolimus and calcium antagonist also so same phenytoin will also show you another adr which is of hirsutism so same drug jab aap phenytoin anti epileptic mein padhoge aap iske dono ad but yahan pe hum dono usko adr basis pe classify kiya to make it easy for us to understand further you will have different suspending agents what is the concentration they are used at contact angle of different wetting agents even this is important toxicity of excipients specific ones different cycles like when you go for doing cycles i'm sorry are you able to see the full screen or is it the slide share view is it the full screen or is it the exterior screen it's the full screen now right yeah so basically while studying all the cycles also you should do them on a comparative note glycolysis pentose phosphate pathway citric acid pathway your gluconeogenesis your glycogenesis and your glycogenolysis now these all are different cycles which are involved where are they happening what is the location where these cycles occur what is the requirement for this particular cycles to take place i mean what is the atp generation how are carbon dioxide being generated in which test or in which type of reaction carbon dioxide is generated in which cycle atp is generated those all points one by one will cover in further other than that what stands more important is kinetics energetics what are the atp which are available in glycolysis what are the total atp being produced what are their inhibitors we will be specific to that i am not teaching this i am just giving you an overview so you might just feel that it's going fast again with regards to enzymes and their application where are different enzymes being used now these are also enzymes from different chapters your streptokinase urokinase is a part of your chapter of anticoagulants your tag dna polymerase is a part of your pcr restriction endonuclease is a part of your rdna so yes they are all different chapters which have some linked to each other with regards to their application your alkaline phosphatase and horseradish peroxidase is a part of your elisa test which is from the chapter of your immunology so yes these all things will stay as a part in so while teaching we go step by step one by one to tap upon everything so this was how you cover multiple topics which are important from gfat point of view in each so we mix it with such small topics which are parallelly important from general point of view i'll just show you how we take up pharmacology and pharm chem together how we take up pharmacology and pharm chem together just hold back and also for alkaloids presentations are opening yeah i'm showing you pharmacognosy as well don't worry so taking you first through with alkaloids uh, sorry first through with your part on antibiotics antibiotics is going to have a high weightage right from your pharmacology pharm chem point of view i suppose you are able to see antimicrobial drugs on screen in case of your antimicrobial drugs its mechanism of action along with different code words p cell and all at the same time when it comes to sulfonamides precise things there are a lot of classifications in sulfonamides do we need them all what is it which is important do we need to do structures for gpat no i don't need structures for gpat 
I just need to know that which drug it is, how are they inhibiting, which enzyme is being inhibited. Now, this sulfonamide is something what we are doing as a part. Your para amino salicylic acid is in anti tuberculosis, your dapsone is in anti leprotic, but they all three inhibit the same enzyme. Then, why not do them together? You can group them together. With regards to application of sulfonamides, which type of sulfonamide is used in which disease? Have some mnemonics in CSK, Chennai Super Kings, ADR, Crystal Urea, Steven Johnson Syndrome, and Kernic Terrace. That's how we can make it easy. Co trimoxazole pe hamesha question aya hai. Co trimoxazole, tri M. T R I M is standing for trimethoprim. Oxazole, oxazole is for sulfonamide. Sulfonamide may be a lag lag drugs. Sulfamethoxazole, sulfadoxin, sulfamethopyrazine. So sulfamethoxazole, one is to five. बहुत टाइम हम लोग क्या करते हैं हम फाइव पार्ट्स ऑफ ट्राइमेथोप्रिम आंसर लिख देते हैं बहुत लोगों को आदत होती है जैसे एस लिखता है वो एस फाइव जैसा दिखता है या तो फाइव एस जैसा दिखता है दे बोथ लुक द सेम दैट्स हाउ यू शुड रिमेंबर देम अगेन विथ रिगार्ड्स टू एडिया स्पेसिफिक आई यू पी एस वेन यू गो टू से विथ रिगार्ड्स टू आई यू पी एस इफ यू ऑब्जर्व ऑल द स्ट्रक्चर्स दे हैव वन थिंग विच इज सिमिलर इन ऑल ऑफ देम इट इज दिस रिंग ऑब्जर्व सब में ये रिंग है so when i'll do nomenclature or iupac of quinolones all these drugs will have one thing which is common in them which is quinoline carboxylic acid carboxylic acid era or sab ke andar oxo group hai oxo is the c double bond o group so all my drugs is going to have c double bond o group all my this drugs is going to have c o o h group so oxo 3 quinoline carboxylic acid agar end mein aata hai मतलब इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट क्लोरोक्विनोलोन्स एज सिंपल एज इट कैन बी लिंक इट अप इन दिस वे सो दैट बिकम्स इजी फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू बी आज अगेन इफ यू ऑब्जर्व द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस ड्रग्स यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई अ लॉट नॉर्थ फ्लॉक्सासिन में पिपरेडिन रिंग है इधर भी पिपरेडिन रिंग है नॉर्थ फ्लॉक्सासिन और सुप्रोफ्लॉक्सासिन में सब कुछ सेम है एक्सेप्ट नॉर्थ फ्लॉक्सासिन में यहाँ पे इथाइल ग्रुप है दो कार्बन राइट इट्स इथाइल ग्रुप ओवर यूर While in case of your ciprofloxacin, it is a cyclopropyl ring. यहाँ पे ethyl group है यहाँ पे cyclopropyl ring है. Parfloxacin में same cyclopropyl group है, but ये piperidine अभी substituted हो गया. There are methyl methyl groups. Same way you have your amino group which is differing over here. When you go to gatifloxacin, gatifloxacin में cyclopropyl ring तो है. बट यहाँ पे एट पोजीशन पे मिथॉक्सी ग्रुप है नो अदर फ्लोरोक्विनोलोन व्हिच हैज मिथॉक्सी पोजीशन एट एट पोजीशन तो मोमेंट इन आई यू पी एस सी आई रीड एट मिथॉक्सी मोमेंट आई सी दैट इट्स ऑक्सो थ्री क्विनोल इन कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड आई स्टेट अवे अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज गैटिफ्लॉक्सिन दैट्स हाउ यू शुड ग्रुप दम टूगेदर आई होप इट्स क्लियर देन इट्स एंटीबायोटिक्स फॉर डिफरेंट ड्रग्स अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स टेट्रासाइक्लिन एंड ऑल Buy at 30 and sell at 50. 30 में खरीदो 50 में सेल कर दो सो थर्टी एट में ए स्टैंड फॉर अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड टी स्टैंड फॉर टेट्रासाइक्लिन दे बाइंड एट थर्टी एस राइबोजोम्स सेल में स्टेप्टोग्रामिन एरिथ्रोमाइसिन लिंकोसमाइड लिनेजोलिट सेल यहाँ से आया सेल एट फिफ्टी मतलब वो सब फिफ्टी एस राइबोजोम पे बाइंड होते वी मेक इट ईजी आई पी एस वाइज एज वेल Further, just to get a more better clarity with regards to the farm chem part of it, I'll just take you through another chapter of uh, farm chem and pharmacology together. So this is basically NSAIDs. In case of NSAIDs, you have a lot of IUPAC, you have a lot of drugs which are required to be done. So when it comes to NSAIDs, in case of NSAIDs, you have your usual classification. Same slide, but its name. उसका आई यू उसका एम उसका एडवर्स इफेक्ट उसका कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन एंड एनी ड्रग ड्रग इंटरक्शन इफ इट इज देयर देन कम्स इट्स एस आर इट्स मेटाबॉलिज्म आई यू पी एस सी ड्रग्स नेम एस ए आर मेटाबॉलिज्म एस ए आर हमेशा स्ट्रक्चर को सेंटर में बना दो एंड क्या पोजिशन पे क्या चेंज करोगे तो उसकी एक्टिविटी चेंज होती रहेगी एट वॉट पोजिशन यू विल चेंज वॉट सो दैट द ओवरऑल एक्टिविटी चेंजेस That's how you can group them together. Only for few drugs you need to remember drug dose. It's not required for all of them. 
same way when you do SAR. Like if you go to do SAR of a drug, which is something like this. So many points in chance of you forgetting one or the other point. If you make it in such a way, it becomes easy for you. So SAR metabolism. Mechanism of action, drug drug interaction, contraindication, everything together. So pharmacology in farm chem goes hand in hand. Talking lastly about cognosy, how do we take up cognosy at our end? I'll just show you a brief slide about alkaloids. This I suppose you are able to see alkaloids on screen. I suppose you are able to see alkaloids on screen. Yes, sir. Okay. In case of alkaloids, or whenever you study any part of cognosy, take two score classification, do sera of skate test, last, group it in the base of heterocyclic ring. Indole alkaloids ke kaun se, imidazole alkaloids ke kaun se. It was straightforward question hata hai. Which among the following is an imidazole alkaloid? Which among the following is an indole alkaloid? So be clear with what type of questions are coming. Have everything about the drug together. No one is going to ask you to write method of cultivation in GPAT, right? You just need to know that amino alkaloids may name has synonyms hai, biological source hai, chemical constituent. Structure bhi GPAT mein tumko koi nahi puchega. Ye structure se fiske liye hai ki maan lo koi heterocyclic ring hai jaise quinazolin ring containing heterocyclic alkaloid kaun sa hai. Ya to fir Piperidine containing heterocyclic concept. Then, if it comes to your different alkaloids with different heterocyclic moiety, what are their chemical tests as well? Everything about that particular drug just in one slide. Your important is why you turn a structure only where you want to compare. Like codeine is a methyl derivative of your morphine. I hope you might be already aware about this. This is how we take up everything together at our end. Anything else? Any other queries in your mind? Any other questions you want to ask? For all those queries, just uh, reach out to the contact number. I'll just share it in the chat box. He'll let you know. With regards to subject wise, yes, it would go different subject wise. Module as such, we don't create in wherever they are related. We move hand in hand. I've shared the contact number. Just get in touch with him. He'll let you know the entire proceedings further. Any other questions you have in your mind? Anything you would like to ask? Test series has twelve thousand plus MCQs. As I said, papers can be attempted at any time. Moment you submit a paper, you will immediately get the answers. So you can immediately observe that what amount of questions have gone correct, what amount of questions have gone wrong. You can observe that on which question you have spent what amount of time. So moment, if you have a question for 50 seconds, dal rho, man lo answer right bhi ja hai. But is it going to be helpful? It probably means that you are weak at that stage. You need to improvise onto that particular concept. So that's how you need to group them together. At the same time, other than that, our test papers include 10 full length papers of the earlier GPAT classes. At the same time, we also have 15 full length papers which are for practice. So 15 plus 10 in total of 25 full length papers for GPAT preparation altogether. A new batch is going to start and you can join in in that. NIPER lectures happen after GPAT. So initially we go on continuously with GPAT and then later on we move on to NIPA. There will be a new batch in which would be including everything. So don't worry. That much is enough. That is another part as well which you need to take into account. So when we join in, I'll discuss about that phase of it as well. With regards to your fee structure and everything, just contact the number given. He'll help you out about all those queries. In.
first some of you might be 2021 some of you might be 2022 some of you might be 2023 just get in touch with the contact number what i have just provided in the chat box it will let you know about the entire proceedings further drug structure is not important but knowing that which heterocyclic ring is present in that drug is important you need to know that what is the heterocyclic ring so when we study it for GPAT, we do it in that manner only that in which drug, what is the heterocyclic ring which is involved. You don't do it superficially, you rather do it in detail, but one time only. So you don't buy out the drug structure. You just would try and understand that what is the heterocyclic ring which is involved in this. Anything else? Just a minute, I am just checking your queries in, just hold on. Okay. We started with the second one, the third one. It doesn't make a difference. You do it from here, you will get MS from Niper itself. Another weekend for the new one to commence in. So next weekend, basically. Done, 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 done. Anything else? Thank you. Just get in touch with Akash. Yeah, someone was asking something. Okay, nothing in. Class is there online, offline as well, but no offline till COVID. Post COVID, it would go offline as well. But that is based in Mumbai at Thane and Dadar. We are not into GRE, TOEFL, IELTS and all. But if you need counseling for GRE, TOEFL and IELTS, we do counsel for preparation, not for admission process. You can reach out onto the given number in the chat box for GRE, TOEFL and all. The new batch has not started. We started with the second one. The third one will pitch in from next weekend. All right, then take care. Stay home, stay safe. All the best to all of you. Study hard, target All India Rank 01 only. No branches in Pune as of now, but we are in the plans, but nothing to commit as of now due to COVID. GPAT can actually be cracked in just one year. There is no need of going in detailed way. The best part, as I told you, you should know what is supposed to be done. If you know what is supposed to be done, then let's the rest part of it becomes easy. So we are not there one by one with all the different areas across India, but we are there online across India. Once COVID goes off, we probably plan for three places. One is Pune, another is Hyderabad, and third one is Nasik. So, but nothing as on of now to commit it. Niper is a bit difficult. So, yes, that would be one challenge because with regards to speed and all, so you can just go through my channel. There is a separate video on Niper preparation as well. You will get a better idea. Surely. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay home, stay safe, take care. Thanks a lot.